Hi and welcome to the second episode of Learn Cocos TV. In this episode I'll talk a bit about the simple multiplayer data sharing project, name to be named, um, that I'm working on. It's a commercial product. Um, then I'll show you the fast pixel perfect collision detection uh, project that I wrote for the IDEF blog at day post. Um, currently I'm uploading uh, Cobol 2D version 1.0.1 with lots of bugs fixes and a few extra um, features and finally I have some Xcode tips and tricks for you. So I'll get to the uh, commercial product that I'm working on and I'm quite excited about it. Um, in essence uh, you basically register one object or um, the object uh, on each side of the connection and give it an identifier like player one and of course we have also player two and the trick here is um, that you just give a list of um, properties that you want to share um, between the devices and you register that with a singleton class net objects here and um, also tried various uh, data types um, so there's a lot of flexibility here and um, what it does is um, let's see that means whenever a property like position changes um, and has been registered with uh, KK Network objects, um, um, it will be collected and transmitted over the network. The net objects uh, gives you an NS data object that you can just um, transmit with, um, well, send to all players with GameKit. And um, similarly, if you receive such an NS data object, um, you can just uh, say update properties with data and well it does the job for you it updates all your objects properties um, according to the data received i'll show you the simulator build should come up quickly here um I'll basically start match find match won't work here but it's it's working in the project um i'll have to go to a split screen match because i'm in the simulator and what it does is just well, take the position of player one and whenever it changes, it sends a data packet and you can see down here it's uh, uh, 18 bytes NS data that it sends over um, and, well, <laughs> it just works. Um, the cool thing is you just add some properties and they'll automatically be shared. And um, if you're wondering, uh, CG point um, doesn't look like 18 bytes. Yeah, there's some bit of overhead, but of course, um, the more you send, uh, the fewer the overhead will be. And going on to the next project, um, I also made some pixel perfect collision detection stuff uh, for the IDEF blog a day post. Um, it's a, I call it the KK pixel mask sprite um, that wraps all this functionality and it's uh, I think about 300 lines of code. Um, I explained it all in the blog post here fast pixel perfect collision detection for Cocos TD. Um, the post I actually had to split into two because, um, well, WordPress gave me an error. Um, so I'll show you the project. So let's look at this. Touch collision detection. This is basically a project where um, I just uh, take a point and see if it's um, on the graphics of that sprite. <clears throat> First, of course, um, um, there's a check if the touch is uh, even in the is in the bounding box of that sprite. Obviously, um, makes sense. Um, so that colors it green, and once you go over the pixel area, it starts going red, and it even catches the slightest um, differences. If you move over here, it should yeah quickly blink green. So um, it's really pixel perfect collision detection. And this part also works on rotated sprites, as you can see. Uh, the other part, unfortunately, doesn't because it's it's very complex to actually make this work with um, rotated sprites. Um, this one here collides uh, or tests the collision of two pixel mask sprites. Uh, so it compares the pixels of one sprite with the others and uh, checks if there's a collision. And once you move too close, yeah, you get a collision here or on the other side, that's a bit of shadow here that's colliding and thing. So it's really accurate collision detection. Um, of course, uh, I'm uploading 
Cobalt 2D version 1.01 right now and that includes um, the KK Pixel Mask Sprite class. It also includes the KK screenshot from the last IDEV Blogger Day post. Um, um, unfortunately only works with uh, CC render, uh, with uh, iOS um, because I realized that apparently Cocos 2D doesn't support the safe buffer met method in Mac builds, strangely enough. Um, and the other big uh, addition is uh, thanks to Tomohisa, um, he added um, or helped me add the add rotation for iAd and AdMob. So whenever an iAd ad fails to load, it um, tries to load an AdMob ad. And when that fails to load, it goes back to trying a iAds. Um, this is very important for um, sometimes countries don't support one or the other ad provider or um, one of them might be down. So this is really um, helpful. And there are, of course, a lot of other changes here, as you can see. Um, I think the most notable is the Box2D debug, debug layer, which um, actually allows you to uh, draw the debug stuff of Box2D without um, having the textures disappear. And of course, um, several KK input uh, um, bugs that were bugging some users, obviously. Um, what I'd like to also go into detail is um, the dreaded uh, LD file not found failed with exit code one type errors. Um, I've gotten a lot of reports ever since Cobalt 2D was out, and um, um, I never could m put my finger to it. And it turns out that uh, there are actually a varied number of reasons why this could occur, occur and that's why it may, was it so hard to track down. Um, so first thing is, um, unfortunately Xcode, um, if you open a workspace with a project in it and you open another project with the same, uh, another workspace with the same project, um, it won't load uh, that project. It can, Xcode can only load one project at a time. Um, so, if you have two Cobalt 2D workspaces open, is um, what what happens is that the Cobalt 2D libraries project is just listed as a string. It's not it, you can't unfold it, and um, it obviously won't work. Um, so close all workspaces and reopen the one again. Um, sometimes, of course, um, users are used to open the Xcode project file instead of the workspace. That won't work either, and will also give the file not found uh, results. Then there's the um, very new uh, possibility for this error is um, if you create a custom build configuration and typically you would do this um, to create an ad hoc or distribution type configuration. Um, this won't work with Cobalt 2D unfortunately because um, the linker is looking in the wrong directory for the static libraries. Um, well, the good news is that um, this is an old habit that you can just let go of and um, use the Xcode 4 way of uh, building ad hoc and uh, distribution builds. Um, the way you do this is just build an archive build, which opens the organizer when it's done. And from there you can, um, I can show you organizer. Where is it? Ah, I'm so confused. Organizer. Um, so you have, I have an arcade archive built here and you can just click on share or submit um, to create your um, distribution versions. Um, so you don't have to create your own build configurations. Next, um, what could also happen is that the Cobalt 2D libraries just doesn't exist. Maybe it was, uh, the folder was renamed, uh, the files were moved or something like that. Um, you might want to reinstall Cobalt 2D in this case. Also, if you move this around uh, inside the workspace, uh, things like this can happen that the Cobalt 2D libraries project becomes a sub project of your project. Um, that also won't work. And finally, some users reported that um, actually changing the locations, the build uh, locations, and I believe it was location specified by targets, um, can fix this issue. Okay, that's that. Um, let's go to some tips and tricks I found. Um, one thing is, um, if you noticed uh, with the newer Xcode versions, um, if you're trying to build for older devices, you sometimes uh, can't debug or can't even install the app. Um, what you do is um, open Xcode preferences and install the device debugging support. Um, so basically, if you have 
Xcode I already did this so um, I don't see the buttons but if you go to locations here in the preferences uh, downloads and the preferences you can just click here the button here and install the device debugging support for 3.0 to 4.0 and so on let's assume that uh, I have a NS assert somewhere in my code and um, that's supposed to um, instruct me about some kind of error and um, well sometimes at least this happened to me um, the error I didn't get any stack trace anymore I'm just going back to UI application main and I just see the message in the log but uh, well I'm used to stop the program stopping where um, it's supposed to stop where the assertion occurred and what you do is you go to the breakpoints tab and click on plus add exception breakpoint and just click OK and you get an all exceptions breakpoint. Now when you run this again and it crashes, now the Xcode um, will jump to that line, the funding line and uh, you get the full stack trace and you can analyze the variables here etc etc. So and finally what else do I have? Um, uh, I've recorded another podcast, Cocos 2D podcast with Mohamed Azam. Um, this time we had uh, Nick Wainick uh, uh, together with us and we talked about augmented reality. So um, I guess that's it for this episode. Um, I hope I'm under 15 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it even more importantly. And well, um, see you in two weeks again. Bye bye.